Hello everyone, this is Damon with PixNub Software. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to reduce green spill in your green screen photography setup. Now for this demonstration, I'm doing this inside of Blender 3D software. And the reason for that is because I can quickly change things around in the scene and instantly show you the results on how it affects the green spill. Now this does represent real world lighting pretty closely, so this is directly applicable to your photography. Also, I've got um, a link to this file in the description of this video, so if you want to play around with this file in Blender, um, you can download that and check it out for yourself. So the first thing people do when they um, set up a green screen is they typically go get a very large screen. 10 by 20 is a real popular size that people get, and sometimes even larger. And then they'll do a setup similar to this. And while initially this setup looks good, this does cause quite a bit of um, spill issues. Let me show you first. I'm going to um, view the side view here. And then I'll turn the walls off here so we can see. And this is typically how people will set their screens up. And you notice the person here is roughly six to seven feet from the screen, and that's good. But what you have in a setup like this, now we've got three soft boxes here, two at 45s and then a hair light. But what happens in a setup like this is this white light bounces off of the green and reflects onto the person. And you can see behind, there's a lot of spill behind the person. Um, and that's normal, but that's where you want to keep the spill behind and out of the view of the camera. When you have this large surface area in front, you're going to introduce some spill into the front. And you can even see underneath on the, the hands here, you've got some spill. So I'm going to view this from the camera perspective here. And these borders, this is the border of the camera frame. So this is where you'd be shooting um, or the, the frame from your shot of your camera. So I'm just going to render this out against transparency. And I'm not going to be explaining exactly how I'm doing everything here in Blender because most photographers are not using this software. I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. But what you see once you've rendered out or once you've shot your image and extracted, those areas of spill are very noticeable. And I'm going to render one more time and I'm going to do that with the screen itself in the render and just show you that it's... Um, kind of deceiving in your initial green screen shot where you don't notice the spill. And when you, when you initially get your shot, it looks good when you're just viewing it because the green around the person is so bright, you don't notice the green. And if you zoom way in, you can notice that there is some heavy spill under this arm, for example. And if we view the extracted image, you see that these pixels are the exact same color as um, the non-extracted image, but it just, that green pops once you've extracted it. Now, Easy Green Screen will go in and try to neutralize that spill, and it does a pretty good job for a lot of spill situations. But I do get people that sent the, actually a lot of people, I get, you know, two or three times a week, somebody is going to do a setup like this, and they're going to say, hey, what's the best settings inside of Easy Green Screen to remove this spill? Well, my answer is always the same, is that you should always try to eliminate the spill in your green screen setup first and only use easy green screen where needed to remove it. And it, in general, if you're needing to go in and tweak spill settings inside of easy green screen, then you've probably got too much spill to start with and it's better to eliminate that spill in your setup. If you do that, then most of your extractions will be one click and you won't have to mess with any settings. So I'm going to go back into our image here. I'm going to show you the setup that I, I use when I shoot and the difference you'll see in the extracted image. So I'm going to turn off the green screen and the green floor here. Okay, so in our green screen setup, and I purposely for this demonstration made it so it doesn't cover the entire frame of the camera, because I really want to drive the concept home that you don't 
necessarily have to cover the entire frame of the camera with green. It's very simple to crop as long as the person's elbows or feet or whatever you need in the image are not sticking out past the green screen. Making a simple box selection and cropping is much less time consuming than dealing with a heavy green spill situation. And so you're not actually saving yourself time in a lot of cases. Now you can usually get away with you know a little bit extra and covering the frame, but don't make it so wide that you have a bunch of additional green that you're dealing with. I'm going to go ahead and re-render this extracted here and just show you the difference um, between this and the image with the large green screen setup. So with this, the only thing you see is a little bit under the feet and because that's all that there is in front of them is that little bit of green. And easy green screen usually takes care of something like this pretty easily on its own and you shouldn't have to adjust any settings. But you notice that on the undersides of these arms and hands, there's no green spill whatsoever. And if you look at the, um, the one where we had the large green floor and green screen, you notice all that spill. Whereas simply by reducing the green screen footprint, that's eliminated. And I'm also going to show you too something I notice here. You've even got a green cast, just a very slight green cast, but over the entire body. And that's caused by that green reflection because the white light hits the green and it turns into green light. So it's like having a large green softbox on the floor shining green light up onto the person. So let's go back into our green screen setup and I'm going to do one more render and then I'm going to go in and change some more things and, and show you um, a little bit more how the spill works. So go back into my render view and this next point I'm going to make is something that you really want to take to heart. If you are not going to have feet in the final composition, then don't put a floor underneath their feet because even though in this extraction we don't see spill, if you have any reflective objects, those still have a path for reflection. I'll be going over that in one minute, but the first thing I'm going to do is just move this floor. Oops, I moved the wrong thing there. So let's just undo what I did. Make sure I'm on the floor here. I'm going to move that floor so it's behind. And I'm going to put it just behind their feet and show you now the difference by just that little bit of moving it so all the greens behind them I'm going to show you the difference you're going to get so let's render this back out again now of course if you were going to cut feet out in a photography situation you would have to manually trace and cut that out but if you were not, not including feet in the image Look how clean everything is. I mean, there's no spill whatsoever in that image. And so then you're not going into easy green screen and trying to find out the best settings to tweak to correct the spill. You just don't even have the issue to start with. Now, hair is a different thing, of course. You're always going to have where the, it shows through the um, this flyaway hairs. And I've got other videos to show that. But this is just talking about the spill that you can control with your setup in this video. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is just go into this and just show you. Um, let's. I think I'm going to go back to the um, the large setup here, and then. Um, all right, we'll go back to this setup. Let me get back over to where we can see. Lost my place here. We'll get back. I don't know what I did, but in any case, let's um, get back over to the side view. I'm just going to show you what's happening um, when we move this floor. So I'm going to take this. Um, green floor and I'm just going to start moving it back and watch underneath the hands here. Let's 
as soon as you get to about this position, most of that green is gone, and a little bit under here, but as soon as we start moving it back, you can see how that spill is instantly removed. Now you're always going to have spill behind the person, but the whole key is, is keeping that spill behind them and out of view of the camera. And that's why making the screen more narrow and behind them is going to eliminate that. So if we look at it now from the camera perspective, we don't see any spill. Now I'm gonna go back to, um, let's actually move this back out. I'm going to now discuss reflective objects because those work quite a bit differently. So what we have now is we have more of a diffuse or a matte material. Um, so the spill that happens with the, a matte material is when you're actually bouncing light. And what happens is um, this white light hits the green. And when it reflects, it's now green light. And then that light is illuminating the uh, matte material. Reflective materials work in a completely different way. Um, let's just um, go in here. I'm going to change this um, bat to a reflective material. Let's get on the bat. All right, so So now I've changed this bat into pretty much a chrome bat here. I'm going to show you how reflective materials are quite a bit different. Okay, so with a reflective material, they are going to reflect pretty much like a mirror. And if we can get the right angle here, you see we've got our soft box up here, and then you've got the ceiling behind it, then you've got the green screen being reflected. But depending on the angle of the reflection, you can see that the area of the bat, the colors change based on the angle that you're looking at it. For example, the top of the bat here, you're seeing it's green because it's reflecting green. But if you look at it from this angle, the top of the bat is now white because it's reflecting um, the walls on the side. So that's an important concept because that's different than a diffuse material. So if you notice the back of the head here is green because that's getting illuminated by the, the green light being reflected. It doesn't matter what angle we look at it, the back of that head is always green because it's not seeing the reflections of what's behind it, if that makes sense. It's, it's working in a completely different way. And so, let's go back to the camera view, and I'll show you with a reflective object here. Okay, it's hard to see because it's the same color, so let me turn the reflection down just a bit. Now you can see it a little bit better. Um, this whole side of the bat is green because the angle of reflection in the camera view is seeing this green screen behind it. So that is why, in particular, I am... Um, well, before we do that, too, I got a reflective material for the, the person. Let's just throw that on there. So let's say that um, you're doing a... I don't know, a photo shoot with um, the Black Widow superhero character and she's wearing, you know, a latex suit or something. You see all this green that's now being reflected from that green floor. Well, that's a lot different than a straight up diffuse or matte material because you see you don't see much of that green spill because it's working in a different manner. It's um, Whereas any spill that happens on diffuse, like I say, is from the green light being um, reflected onto it. The reflective material is more mirror-like. And you can see, for instance, you can now see the soft boxes and um, you can really see the green here. And under, you know, under the face, you can see all that. Now that's why I purposely set up my screen um, quite a bit smaller. Let's go with that small floor and small screen again. 
Now you see with this setup, all of those spill issues, like under the face and on the legs, are completely gone, except for the sides you see a little bit. And working with reflective materials is quite a bit more difficult. But you can see now that the bat has just got a very thin, thin layer of green on it instead of that really wide area of green. And also, any softball bats usually aren't this reflective. You probably have some something like, um, you know, somewhere in somewhere in here is probably where you'll see most of your your softball bats. They're a little reflective. That you got have a painted material, but um, they usually don't extract too bad. So anyway, I think that about covers what I wanted to show you. And I guess if you, oh, I'm gonna show you a real world example of how I shoot. And if I had just showed you this photo up front, you would have probably thought this guy doesn't have a clue what he's doing. He's not covering the frame in green. His setup is really small. He's trying to cut costs by going with a small little green screen and floor. But in reality, you know, this is all done by design. Now you see I do have a few wrinkles in this screen. Easy Green Screen doesn't care about wrinkles very much. It extracts those pretty well. But what I'll show you is you don't see any spill at all and maybe just a hint on the cleats. And that's because it's using that compact setup like I showed you. And in this ball here, in particular, sports balls are bad for this if you have this shiny material. If I had have went with that really large green floor in front, you would have seen green reflections in this ball, and like under these laces, and maybe in here on the white on the football. When you have a large green floor in front, you always turn those areas green. You see in this image, those areas are not turned green. And I'll just show you how much easier it is if you just wanna you know, take a couple seconds to crop, and you can also do some batch cropping. I've got some tutorials on that as well, to where you could pre-crop everything very quickly before. But I mean, just that simple cropping there saves you a lot of time in green spill. So, if you're trying to save time by ensuring you're covering the entire camera frame in green, you could be costing yourself a lot of time. We'll just apply this here. Now let's show you how well this extraction worked without doing any modifications whatsoever to Easy Green Screen. And I just ran a single mask extraction there. I mean, yeah, there's some dark shadows under the cleats. There's no way to get around that because those areas were black in the photo, not green. But you see there's no spill that we have to deal with in this. So anyway, thanks for watching, and if you're interested at all in Easy Green Screen, please be sure to visit our website, that is pixnub.com. And also, as mentioned before, there is a link to the Blender file in this video description. I will say this to photographers, if you've not used Blender, there's quite a bit of a learning curve. It is a free software you can download, um, but please don't bombard me with questions on how to use Blender because it's, um, it's got a pretty steep learning curve. But for those of you who already know that and want to um, you know, download this file and check it out, by all means, do so.